Well, we, ha we have a, uh, a wonderful thing here. In addition to what we just saw and, and the inspiration of all of it, we're, we're actually on time. Um, <laughs> you know, those, those of us who've been involved with events like this always wonder how you stay on time, and we are on time. And I'd like to say a little bit about our first panel. Um, a number of comments were made in the introductory remarks this morning about um, uh, this 21st century environmentalism and some of the problems that we uh, currently face. This first panel we're hoping will, uh, and we expect, will, um, more than hope, uh, <laughs> will, will really uh, help us delve into some of, the, uh, some of these emerging issues and also some of the ways we see um, environmental education uh, being responsive to those changes in the, in the future. So I'm going to ask uh, uh, the first panel to, to come on up here. I think there's a, yeah, there's a way up over on the other side. So I'm going to turn this over to um, Dr. McNutt, who's, uh, the, as we heard already from David, the, the head of the U.S. Geologic Survey. And um, Marsha, I want to say one thing very quickly. Uh, we're expecting Nancy Sutley to perhaps stop by. Uh, uh, so when she does uh, stop by, we would like to give her the opportunity to make a couple of comments about this panel as well. Okay. But otherwise, we're going to turn it over to you. And uh, thank you, panelists, all for being here. Okay, great. Um, well, good morning. Uh, as Bob said, I'm Marsha McNutt. I'm director of the USGS. And before I introduce the panel, um, I'm going to take uh, John Carson up on his uh, suggestion that we each take a moment to say something about our inspiration for becoming involved in environmental education. And um, Mine comes from the fact that um, as a, a geoscientist, I remember back to a day when I was at a high school, having been asked to come and speak to some classes there as a uh, lecturer when I was on the faculty at MIT. And I remember speaking to one of the, um, one of the teachers at the high school saying, now, these um, students that I'm speaking to, these um, students in uh, earth science classes, can you give me a little bit of background? How many of them, for example, will be going on to college? And the teacher said, oh, you don't understand. These are our earth science students. They won't be going to college. Now, I don't often lose my cool. <laughs> But the thought that in this high school they were tracking all of the students that were not intending to go to college into the earth sciences and the college bound students were going into physics and chemistry and biology immediately made me upset because I thought we were well beyond the days of rocks for jocks. And now leading the largest agency in the federal government that does science for the natural sciences, uh, for um, geology, for um, uh, hydrology for geospatial work and for uh, ecology and knowing how important it is for every citizen to basically have an owner's manual for planet earth it is we can't leave this to chance it is very important that we have not only professionals that will staff agencies like mine, 
but that we have every citizen understand how to be a, um, a, a useful user of this planet that is basically our only home and the only planet that we know of that can be a suitable habitat for us. So that is why I am here today. Now, let me introduce our distinguished panel that we have today to discuss um, our first topic. And our uh, first topic is uh, entitled 21st Century Environmentalism, Shaping the Emerging Vision for Environmental Education. And I am very pleased to introduce Pat Pineda, who's the Group Vice President for National Philanthropy and the Toyota USA Foundation of Toyota Motor North America. So welcome, Pat. And we also have Judy Bross, who's the Executive Director for North America Association for Environmental Education. Welcome, Judy. And we have Andrew Rotherham, who's co-founder and partner of Bellwether Education. And he's also an educational uh, columnist for time. Andrew, welcome. And Dr. Daniel Bloomstein, who's a professor for ecology and uh, evolutionary biology at UCLA. And we have uh, Charles Salen, and um, Charles is, uh, a, um, uh, is, is best known for having uh, co-founded the Ocean uh, Conservation Society, and uh, he has uh, also um, written um, some well-known books, I believe, right, Charles? <laughs> One, well-known, I'm not sure. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so welcome, Charles. And uh, Bridget Howe, who's manager um, of program services for the Girl Scout Council here in the nation's capital. So welcome, Bridget. So I'm wondering, before we launch into the questions, uh, whether you'd each like to take a minute to talk about your journey here into uh, environmental education. So. Uh, would you each like to, to take a minute? I was at the first Earth Day with my mom. Grew up in yeah. Philadelphia. Um, and Schuylkill River, you know, was really polluted. And we got some water. And it was clear. <clears throat> and we had a stand. And we talked about water pollution. It was a, it was a teaching. And we were learning. And I learned that clean water doesn't, isn't necessarily clean. And I was pretty fortunate. We moved to the suburbs. Um, and I had a wooded lot behind our, our house. And I got into outdoor things early. And, I spent a lot of my youth and, and certainly college um, years climbing and hiking and, and sailing and being and skiing and, and being outside. Um, I studied biology, I'm a biologist. Um, I've been really fortunate to, to work all over the world. And I've been learning from the people around the world, working in national parks in Pakistan, um, working in Australia, working in Europe, um, that we all sort of have uh, you know, the, the, the same common problems. And when I met Charlie, um, we wrote a book called The Failure of Environmental Education and How We Can Fix It. So maybe we're a bit of a buzzkill here. But, um, <laughs> but, but um, you know, we, we sort of, from very different perspectives, came to uh, a very similar realization, which I think I'll share with you as well, that we've got to do a better job, that um, we're, we're living um, right now, um, the world is living at about you know, 1.4 Earths in terms of our ecological footprint. That ain't sustainable. And while we all you know, have been very successful at raising awareness, we think that we're, we're struggling to, to sort of get to action. We've been talking and thinking quite a bit about this, and we need help, and we all need to work together. And we'll have more comments, I'm sure. Okay. If I could just sort of. Yeah, OK. Why don't we go to, to Dan and Charlie. Uh, uh, you've written the book on the, the failure of uh, environmental education. What, what do you say to what Andrew has suggested? I, I just want to follow up specifically suggested. with what Andrew says, because I think he's absolutely right on. Um, you know, we, we talk about, um, we were brought here to be provocative, um, we, 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 uh, we, we, we talk about maybe we should just pull the environmental out of education. We need to create wise citizens who will take care of the future and be stewards of the earth. 
and that requires students to understand about the environment, essentially. It involves students who understand about politics, literature, aesthetics. It involves students that um, understand how to create change. My son's being tested to death in a California elementary school that has some of the highest marks, um, you know, marks in Los Angeles. Um, yet he is thrilled when he gets to do project-based learning and he's not doing enough of that. And we have to get people out there and uh, train them to be citizens of the earth. And we really don't have a lot of time for that. I'd, I'd like to add specifically to what Andy said as well, that, that I think also uh, when you look at dropout rates and you look and you compare that to socioeconomic divisions in our society, I think one of the things that environmental education really desperately needs to do is find ways to get into communities that previously have not been reached, poor communities, uh, communities that everybody else ignores, that their own municipality ignores. And, and maybe the way in there is through environmental justice, you know, appealing to people on an environmental justice basis. But I think we have to address those communities and the communities that we, we currently, uh, I don't think, put enough energy into, into uh, one last yeah. comment from Dan, and then we have to wrap up. And this up. is not a paid political announcement, but I think scouting is actually one of those ways <laughs> yeah. that takes it out of school, but is, is really building citizens. And it gets people outside, but it gets people doing projects for the community. It enables them and empowers them and rewards them for learning about a lot of different things that are what we're, we're talking about. And it can't just be in the schools. It has to be a more community-based thing. So things like scouting um, can play a very important role in this as well. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for that, and I think we can thank our panel for uh, a very lively discussion. Thank you.